Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and it's been a while since I've done a Thursday mixed media play session, and I thought today I would do some gel printing. So I have a 12 by 12 gel plate here. I have some stencils. You'll see a bunch of my new stencils that I'll use. I also have some mark making tools. For example, these are spools that held thread, like this held for comb thread. This was for embroidery thread. I even have some shot glasses and some other spools as well. Then I also have some bubble wrap that my husband saved for me and I have some shelf liner and then anything else that I choose to pick up. So I'm just going to play a little bit and then I'll show you at the end what my gel prints look like. By the way, if you are new to gel printing, this is a soft surface. It resists paint so you put paint on it let it dry a little bit or just immediately pick it up you can use tools like stencils and a brayer and i'm using a four inch soft speedball brayer it's my favorite i've also got some book pages over here to the side and then i'll use some basically copy paper this happens to be a green linen paper that i have five reams of and i'm trying to use it up i may also use some other book pages and then i have a tub of water over here to the side i'll show you so it's just a tub of water and i put a bit of thieves cleaner inside of it uh, not, not quite a cap full it just helps with getting the paint off of my stencils and tools when i'm done with my session all right so we're gonna get started here i'll just put down some coats of paint and we'll just see what happens all right, so we're going to get started here with the March Artistic Stencil Club. I grabbed one of the stencils out of that. It's a set of three stencil sheets with four different patterns. I've got a little blue. This is little daisy stencils. I have two different styles that are daisies. And I'm just randomly applying paint here and there. That's my large diamond stencil. I'm using regular craft acrylic paint. I think this is Anita's. I pick it up at Hobby Lobby when it's on sale. Now I'm using some bubble wrap. I used my brayer and rolled that over the bubble wrap. And I did the same with the Romantic Swirl rubber stamp. And I make sure to clean my rubber stamp whenever you're done if you're using acrylic paint. Now I'm just putting on the final paint to be able to lift the print. you got to be careful and don't squeeze out too much paint or your paper will slide around and you will not get a very good print. And I go ahead and I mop up all of the edges and I save those. I end up repeatedly, repeatedly picking up all of that excess paint onto a sheet and it makes some really funky texture pages. This is Romantic Swirl, then some bubble wrap. Bubble wrap's a lot of fun. Now remember, whatever prints you put down first is what you're gonna see whenever you pull your gel print. This is the Victorian panel stencil. I've got two that are, have a similar design. And then we have this small broken stencil, circle stencil, broken circles. Get tongue tied, why not? even in a voiceover. Now, whenever my paint is a little bit too wet, sometimes I'll grab a book page and mop it up. I just put a book over to the side and that's what I'm using to brayer off the excess paint. And then I will pick up some of those pages that have excess paint on them, or excuse me, the brayer paint to pick up the excess off the gel print. So you get some cool texture that is the diamond with flare with some gold. I lift up my gel print to kind of look at, remember, what did I put down first? The little dot flowers that you see are from the January 2021 Stencil Club. Remember, you can go back and order a past Stencil Club. Just tell me when you check out which one you want, and that will be your first one. And if you want a different one in the future months, maybe when you come back and you say, you know, I really don't like the current one. I would like the 2020 of March or something like that. I'll do that. <clears throat> This is the funky grid stencil. Now I don't clean off my gel plate in between. If you want to completely change colors, you might want to lay down a solid layer of paint and then pick up that gel print. You may have to take your gel plate to the sink and wash it with just a mild soap and don't use any implements on the gel plate so it won't uh, texturize and, and destroy it. I use some shelf liner and that's the small polka dot stencil and again I'm just mopping up excess paint around the edges. Know that I make all my stencils. I hand draw the designs. I've 
probably drawn about two to three thousand designs since I started and I've currently I think I said I had 175 stencil patterns not including the stencil club in my shop and not including the stencils that I make for my subscription boxes getting lots of cool texture and, and colors and designs this is the broken circle stencil and I'm just repeating it over and over. Let that dry a moment. And then I come back in with a spool, I think. Is this when I do that? Yes. So I put a little bit on my book page to the side there. And I'm just dipping it back and forth like it's a stamp pad in a sense. And my husband has an embroidery shop. So we always have these spools left over. So I like seeing what I can do with them to make texture on my gel prints. You don't want to use a object on your gel plate that could damage it. So always, you know, be sure that you're careful. Like for example, you don't want to use the cutting side of the cookie cutter. This is the polka dot stencil and I'm lining it up. Most of my stencils, ha stencils have a repeating pattern. So you can kind of line them up, especially maybe if you are trying to stencil a pattern, not just with the gel print. <laughs> This is the quilted starburst stencil, and I did it in a bright purple. And then I turn this over onto a book page and try to clean off my back of my uh, stencil, but sometimes that doesn't work for me. I don't have enough room to do that. I do drop the stencils, the wet paint stencils, into my bucket of water so that when I'm done at the end of the session, they're easy to clean up. You never know what you're going to get. And, and I encourage you to play. Don't fret if it doesn't come out perfectly the first time. Just play around with it. If you want a certain pattern or design, you may have to do it a couple of different times to get it to come out the way you want. This is the Broken Squares stencil. I thought it was a fun pattern. Hey, know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. Come hang out with me. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Check the description box for the stencils that I use. And, of course, the gel plate and the soft rubber brayer if you want one. This is the funky diamond stencil that I used here. Occasionally, I have some gel prints that I turn into digital downloads, so check that out as well. So maybe you don't want to get a gel plate, but you like how they come out, but you want them in digital. Well, I do offer a few of those. Check out the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group as well as my Facebook page and Instagram. I share things over there as well. And check out my blog. On my blog, I generally have photos of the images of whatever I'm working with and a kind of a written, thought-out process of why I did what I did. Maybe I think of things after I do the video and kind of give a little better explanation there. Well, this video is going to end here in just a moment with my gel printing. I will go through and show you all the prints and then it kind of ends abruptly because I had intended to make a further video that showed me making stuff with these, but I was disappointed when I got done and I was tired and I didn't want to make anything with these gel prints right then. So I never finished the true video. So this is me going back and editing it so that I could at least show you these gel prints. I did find some of the gel prints so I could take some photos of them, but I didn't find all of them. I did use some of them in some projects and uh, I don't know. I just thought I would share this portion with you so you could see a little bit of my process. This is the Raining Dots and Dashes stencil. And then I've got the Fleur de Lis with Diamond stencil coming up. And this particular gel print, I ended up putting a little bit too much paint on it. And that's okay. You know, you just go with it. Just pick it up. Keep going. It's just kind of like if you fall down, you get up and you just go on. <laughs> you don't, don't stress about it. 
Well, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will show you a flip through here in just a moment. And I greatly appreciate each and every one of you for watching me. It gives me great joy to share what I do. And I love getting your feedback. So please, you know, leave me a comment what you thought about today's gel printing session. Which one was your favorite that you saw? All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Well, I've made a few gel prints. Some of them are awesome. Some of them are bleh. So we'll just kind of go through them. This was the last pull that I made. I had too much paint on my gel plate. And I pulled this one first. It's still very wet. But it didn't get all of the paint off. So I'm going to set that one aside because it's still very wet. But this is the second pull that I got. It's still usable. It may not be the perfect print. You know, a lot of this is just playing, having fun, and seeing what happens on the gel plate. This is where I was cleaning off that bottom portion of the plate. And then I also would grab the stripe in between. So you kind of get some cool prints that way. There's another one where I was cleaning off the plate and I just got some cool patterns. Here is one where we use the daisy stencil and I think the funky diamonds. You know, it doesn't have a lot of definition, but I like the color scheme in the background. This one I used the broken circles. I also used the... Um, bottom of the spool of thread I used the polka dot large polka dot stencil it may be just polka dot and then I also used the quilted starburst in the background so it's got a cool texture here's where I was cleaning off my stencil by just rubbing uh, my brayer over it and sticking it down and then I did the same with the quilted starburst I was just picking up some of the excess paint on my gel plate you probably saw me do that a couple times I had a lot of paint on my plate and I was getting tired of waiting for it to dry so I was mopping up in a sense here's one where we use the whoa I so said what is that I call this uh grid I think I called this a grid stencil it's brand new and then I've got the small polka dot stencil and I also use the um what is that the uh texture the shelf lining on there I've lost it all of a sudden it's disappeared it's no longer oh there it is the shelf lining uh here is some of the mop up again I use some of that gold paint in the background Here's where the broken, the small broken circles, I think it is. I also use a rubber stamp in the background a little bit. Here I use the rubber stamp. I use some bubble wrap. I use the small, I said little daisies. It might be more little daisies. I don't remember. I've got two different ones that are like that anyhow those are the gel prints that I came up with I forgot to show you where I was cleaning off my brayer I have a book here and I was just cleaning off and then I'd rip the sheet off and then I'd set it aside so here's one that I did not gel print on but these I would kind of mop up my gel plate just to get some of the excess paint and I think these kind of ended up really interesting with the texture that they have. Some of them are a little muddy because I use black paint. And the black paint, if you don't let it dry, it will smear. But I like, I like how these came out. There's some cool patterns and textures that will be good to use in my journals.